The following podcast is run by a couple of former wheel turners and one pit guy. It's uh, meant for entertainment, not uh, not so much information, but sometimes there's some good information. Um, the opinions expressed are just, these are the morons on the show. Not necessarily right, not necessarily wrong, not uh, the views of any of the sponsors or anything like that. So uh, these guys, they're going to be talking, they might swear here and there, so if that offends you, uh, either uh, grow up or... Uh, Give a little permission for mom and dad. All right, Wraith fans, Ryan Eho here, the one and only Burt Lehman and Coach Krause in the house tonight. Uh, Coach, Sore subject, I know, but you're probably going to have a little more time for uh, racing stuff now, uh, season ending early. Is that a, still a sore subject here? What what happened? Big season last year. What happened? Well, of course it's still a so, sore subject. You lose. Uh, it's officially racing season in my world now, so um, attempt to get a car together to get on the track. Um, and then, obviously, now um, – it's crazy. Before you know it, we're gonna have to open the doors here up at Viking Speedway because it sneaks up on you in a big hurry. So, starting working with that. But uh, hockey's hockey, man. Yeah, it's sports. I mean, my starting goalie goes down in warmups. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting in my office, and my assistant coach, who's my cousin John, is also a fellow super stock driver. He texts me and says, uh, "Nolan just screwed his ankle up in warmups." And I'm like. Sprint out of my office, get the trainer down there. We get him back on the ice, taped up, and he couldn't go. So, and I got a, I got another good goalie too. But uh, just fortunate, it's, it is, it's part of sports. And injuries hit us, but uh, we were in both games till the end. The guys battled hard, so it's, it's one of those things. It's, uh, it's always next year. Well, that's that's a Minnesota thing right there. Bird doesn't know anything about that. Us Minnesota people, that's what we say. So there's always next year. That's what we do. And uh, so there's a conspiracy theory here, Coach, on uh, on you losing this weekend. I'm not sure if you heard. I, I got a message from uh, not a Kraus fan again. Your your number one fan, and he said this is complete bullshit. Okay, they they didn't lose. They shouldn't have lost them games. Coach Kraus absolutely rigged this whole deal, lost them games on purpose, so he'd have a shot to hit five podiums in uh, 2024. Oh, what do you got to say to that? <laughs> if he saw my race cars right now, he'd be like, those things aren't seeing the track for a long, long time. So I got no idea what he's talking about. I haven't raced in the month of April in a long time. So, um, and I, it's, who knows? I, you know, I might make it to I-94. I don't even, I haven't, I don't even know when anybody's opening or when anybody's racing. So he can, um, if, if he saw my, my contract and the incentives I get for winning, He's, there's no way he's going to know that I, I would ever throw a series. So, um, like I said, I got I had a lot of money on the line there. So I'm, it's all about money these days. And unfortunate, I uh, didn't get any of that stuff. But, uh, no, we're far away from racing season. I know you pretty well. And the only guy that's maybe a more sore loser than me is you. So you, you probably I, I can see you probably didn't rig that. So uh, a little shout out here uh, on episode 215, Impact Health Sharing. So if you're uh, if you're in the market, right, if you're somebody that pays for your own health insurance, if you're self-employed, if you have employees, you got to cover their costs. If you're looking at it, you're like, my God, I'm I'm paying way too freaking much for health insurance. I barely ever use it. We're healthy. Right. This is ridiculous. Hit me up. Two one eight nine six nine thirteen eighty. I might have a solution, maybe help you save some money. I can get you all the info you need. And uh, the company's called Impact Health Sharing. Been a great fit for a lot of people. So, guys, I, I don't know how. I mean, we kind of had a curveball thrown at us. Kind of had the agenda set up yesterday, right? We're doing the show. It's on Tuesday. Thank God we're doing it on Tuesday. We would have had to have an emergency episode. But uh, I think we just got to tackle the hot topic in the room, right? I mean, I think we got to jump right into it. Basically, that was a little racing last weekend, but nothing as big as this. So, in case in case you live underneath a rock and you haven't been on social media and you have no idea what's going on, your reigning World of Outlaw champion Bobby Pierce levied a 30-day or 
four World Vote Law event suspension from the World of uh, World Racing Group, along with Devin Moran. There, there's a little different, but Devin Moran and Kyle Bronson, all of them uh, failed tire testing down in Volusia. When you guys saw this, first thing that went through your mind, Bert, was what? Uh, there goes the championship. Uh, there's, you know, there's no way that, uh, he can repeat as world of outlaw champion, uh, with, with, uh, with the suspension that he has coming. Um, and then just kind of shocked that, you know, um, there hasn't been a big name driver get, get nailed for tire infraction for a while. Um, I mean, I, I know way back. Well, way back, I I don't know, like fifteen years or so, uh, Bloomquist got nailed with uh with uh, a tire infraction. So, just kind of shock and no repeat, <laughs> no repeat. Coach Cross, first thoughts that came to mind. All hell's gonna break loose. Is the first thing that came to my mind because um, we all know the Pierces and we all know what kind of person Bronson is and you know Moran's the Moran seemed pretty low headed but they they're, they're not going to they're not going away quietly there's going to be appeals this is going to be a process um interesting video that came out on dirt vision with the guy with the testing and how they took 67 samples but uh, this this isn't going away quietly especially you're talking Bobby Pierce the hottest driver right now and um this like i said all hell's going to break loose here in the next uh next week or so First thing that came to mind is uh, where was good Jeff um, the week of Volusia? That Friday, right? Where was he? I know he made a trip to Florida. I don't know if it was then, right? I don't know. But I know that on, on the show last week, he said, oh, uh, bold prediction. Bobby Pierce not going to repeat his World of Outlaw champion. <laughs> I, I don't know, right? I mean. Did he go down there and fuck with these tires? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe there needs to be a phone call made, right? Maybe the Pierce attorneys need to look into this. Um, I'm not really sure. So, I don't know. Mass chaos, craziness. I mean, it. lots of questions came to mind. Uh, the first one that came to mind is, so, so here, we'll break this down. So, there was two different instances, right? The Tuesday race down there. Both of these um, events, both of the nights where there was drivers caught with so-called illegal tires, for now they're illegal, uh, Devin Moran won both nights. Okay? Pierce won a few, not those nights. Now, on Tuesday, that was a dirt car race. Now, keep in mind, dirt car is owned by World Racing Group, so is World of Outlaws. Okay? Now, if you remember correctly, a couple of years back um, at the USA Nationals, Tyler Erb had the incident with Bobby Pierce. Tyler Erb got a year suspension on sportsman like conduct from all world racing group events, including Dirt Car and World of Outlaws. Okay. When I read the press releases that came out in regards to Devin Moran and Kyle Bronson, it didn't say anything about being suspended from all world uh, racing group events. It doesn't say anything about World of Outlaws. It simply said a 30-day suspension from Dirt Car. Okay. Bobby Pierce's, right? So night that night, it was Moran and Bronson on the Dirt Car race. Friday night was a World of Outlaw race. Again, both owned by the World Racing Group. Bobby Pierce, his tire didn't meet the benchmark that night. His press release said he's getting suspended from all world racing group events, dirt car, world of outlaws, everything. That doesn't seem real parallel to me. What what's your guys' thoughts on that? Um, I mean they must be going because you know one event was a world of outlaw event and one event and the other one wasn't, but um so yeah, I, that is a little bit strange uh that they're doing it that way. So <clears throat> with that said, right, um, we'll, we'll get into that. That's one of our fan questions on Bronson. We'll, we'll, hold, we'll hold on the Bronson thought there. So Bobby Pierce penalized World of Outlaws. I think it was 294 points, I think it was. And yes. 30 days plus 30 days or for World of Outlaw 
uh, completed events, whichever one comes last. Essentially, he, he ain't going to repeat as champion. Um, Devin Moran, dirt car suspension. Kyle Bronson, right? Think about this. He's down in Volusia. Guys, he blew three freaking motors or at least hurt three motors. Do you think at the end of the week he's sitting there going, holy shit, can this get any worse, right? Dirt car's like, hold my beer. I got something for you. We'll make this worse, right? Not getting the, it doesn't look like a world of all that suspension. I, unless there's something more coming on the pipe, I'm not really sure. Um, any thoughts on this? I know we got some questions on this, but do you guys have any, any thoughts? You know, well, after, after processing this for a few hours. Um, I mean, one thought, I mean, Coach Kraus mentioned that Dirt Vision did do a little uh, segment where uh, they explained uh, how many tiger samples were sent in and that sort of thing. And I, I think it's a good thing that they did that. I think they need to be as transparent as possible on this. Um, but they, they keep saying, you know, 67 samples and, then, you know, these three didn't meet the benchmarks. Well, to be totally transparent, I would like them to release, you know, what chemicals were, you know, what chemicals are found in the tires, you know, release the test results, be totally transparent. Um, and that's the thing with these, with these tire samples. It, I mean, we, we went through this in Eastern Wisconsin with Johnny Whitman a couple of years ago when he won a $10,000 to win mod show. And, um, um, his tires were deemed to uh, not meet benchmarks and they wouldn't even give him the, the tire samples. And, you know, he did contact the lawyer, but the, the lawyer told him, you know, there's not, there's nothing you can do. Um, so my thing is just be transparent. You know, if they broke the rules, be transparent, let us know what's in, you know, be like, and somebody, I saw this on Facebook, be like NASCAR, you know, put the illegal parts on the, on the table, you know, put the test results on the table so the other drivers can see it. Yeah, that same thing happened in Wasota with Jaden Chris last year, right? In the in the street stock class, and they simply would not even let him know until appeal process. They had to pay for it. They they had they wouldn't let him know like what was what was wrong with the tire? What was it? What what was in there? What wasn't in there? What was it missing? Because according to that video, it said there was chemicals. I don't know, don't remember the exact wordings, but basically there was something in the tire that wasn't supposed to be in the tire when they did the testing. Um, maybe, maybe they should check that in comparison to Kyle Bronson's engine oil that he left all over the racetrack all week down. Another, I'm not really sure, but uh, Coach Krause, your thoughts. I mean, that was the thing that you talked about too, is where's the transparency, right? What's, what's, I mean, it's just something, something don't seem right here. Yeah. And I don't know. It sounds like it was a Blue Ridge deal, right? It was a Blue Ridge yep. lab that yeah. did it. Um, and I've seen their reports. They send out a report. It's a full report. And they list the chemical thing, the whatever was in it. They list the, I don't know. I, I'm not a scientist. I don't know any of that stuff. But, um, you know, the flip side is, A, if they were doing something or they put something in the tires that you didn't, whether you're washing them or whatever it was, um, it'd be nice to know from a driver's standpoint that, hey, you can't do this. So it doesn't happen again. Um, and if they were cheating, they were cheating. That is what it is. So um, um, they need, like I said, they need to be transparent about that and um, tell them you you need to know what the chemical was, what were we doing and things like that. So and then the other flip side is, you know, the the suspension you're talking. I'm telling you right now, if I'm a if I'm a racetrack operator and I'm supposed to have a world all out show in the next month and Bobby Pierce ain't going to be there, I'm mad. I'm super mad. That the star of the series is not going to be at that track because it. I mean, the fans are going to come, but you're going to deter a lot of people. There's more to this than just suspending a guy uh, a month, which was I don't think is necessary. I mean, you suspend Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott a month. I think all heck's going to break loose. Um, so there's there's a there's a lot to this. There's a lot more than just hey, here's you're illegal. Um, here's your suspension. Here's your points. Here's your money. Um, there's a lot more to this, so uh, be interested. I, it's, I, you know, it's something that I, it's going to be see how it plays out in the next week or so. Is it just going to be a black and white deal and we're done with it? Um, but like I said, they're going to appeal, they're online. Uh, Bobby's mom's up making claims already, so I've assumed that they're going to appeal and do whatever they need to be and 
clear their name and you got sponsors on the line. This, this, this is a, this is a really big deal. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing right now, again, everybody wants transparency. I reached out to a few um, world of outlaw late model drivers and uh, I got a little off the record. Nobody wants to put their name out there, but off the record, some of them are saying, here's the deal. Um, They've been warned, right? This is, this has been an ongoing deal, according to some of the drivers, right? They're like, they have been talking to drivers. Like, we know that some of you, and I'm not I'm not accusing, this is not for me. I'm not accusing anybody of, like, they're cheating. I'm not doing that. But according to some of the drivers I talked to, they said, we know that some of you are altering and doing stuff to your tires that you're not supposed to. They talked about, you know, the ice baths and the heating and all that stuff down there. That's different than chemicals being in your tire. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe heat changes chemical composition. I'm not sure. But in his opinion or their opinion, because there's a couple different ones, they said, you got to make the penalty stiffer. So we talked about it. We're like, I didn't make the penalties less because you're penalizing the fans. They're like, and maybe it's monetary. Maybe it's not a suspension. Maybe it's monetary, right, or or however you're going to do it. But they said, make the penalty stiffer, police it more, do it more randomly, and do it transparently and out in the public so people can see what's going on, how this process works, what's in the tires. Because you're right, it could be a cleaner. I mean, it could be, I mean, simple green, right? Because here's what they're doing, okay? I know this for a fact because I've talked to people that have actually talked to, um, in fact, Blue Ridge Labs was the people they talked to, is... You take like simple green, simple green used properly just to wash the tire. That's not going to trigger anything in the report. Okay. But if you take simple green in high concentrate and you put it on the tire and you wrap it and you let it sit, that will show up in the report. So some people are like, well, simple green, we'll just use it to wash our tires. Well, yeah, maybe right? Or maybe you're using it in a different fashion and a higher concentrate. So as long as there's been tires, people have been trying to figure out a way to make them work better. That's just the way it works, right? You got siping, grinding, grooving, softening, heating, cooling, all this different stuff. People are going to try to use them. Guys, it's $235, kind of across, maybe a little less, a little more, depending on the area, for those late model tires plus tax. That's two hundred and seventy dollars out the door for a tire, Coach Kraus. How many of the top tier late model guys do you think run their tires more than one time? Uh, there's not very many. Uh, pro- uh, anybody in the top ten, you, you probably expand it. But just for this sake, I guarantee there's nobody in the top 10 running them. And, you, and first off, you can't. You're running 50, 60, 70 lap shows. You ain't, you ain't going to do it. So that those tires are one and done. I'm probably all four of them. So, Tommy, I'll, and I'll start with this, and then we'll give a little shout out to one of our sponsors here. But that's the fan question. That's the number one question. I got this one from multiple people. Tommy sent it to me first. He goes, with the cost of tires, and these are national touring series, super late model teams. Most of them got pretty big budgets. If they're going to be one and done with the tires, why not just let them do whatever the hell they want to do? Who cares, right? Who cares? Some people are like, well, if you let them do it, they're going to do all kinds of stuff, and they're going to de- they're going to debalminate, right? As Billiam would say, they're going to fall apart. Well, that's their problem at that point. If they give themselves a flat, that's on them. Try something different next time, right? You know, so why not? Okay, that's tire stuff has been voodoo for years. But back in the day, people ran them longer. They ran a couple nights, two, three nights out of them. They don't do that anymore. That's not a thing. Why not let them just do whatever they want to do and call it a day? Coach Ross or Bert, either one of you. You got a thought on that? What's what's your thoughts on that? Well, I I don't know what it all takes to chemically alter tires. I mean, I did read a Facebook post today, you know, basically the same line of questioning why can't they just do whatever they want to do and then somebody replied well then then it's going to be like carding and you know everybody's going to be doping their tires and then there's going to be safety concerns and you know i don't know how unsafe it is working with those chemicals i mean i guess anytime you're working with 
dangerous chemicals, it's not safe. So, you know, there is a safety aspect to it. Yeah, the old, and there is, there, there is stuff out there for sure that is not good for you. There, there 100% is shit that people, but literally I laid underneath my race car. John Tardy gives me shit about this all the time. I used to lay underneath my car or race car and literally empty out an entire can of brake clean every night cleaning my hives and cleaning everything off and i'd be sucking that stuff in like it was nothing and they're worried about tire stuff i mean so go-kart people do it i mean it's out there that again that'll police itself there is new tire technology for example daytona one right so that's an economic uh, that's uh eco-friendly stuff it's good for the environment it's not something that's unsafe like this other stuff so there are there is new technology in tire treatment but again they're spending two hundred seventy dollars on a tire that lasts one night. Who cares, Coach Krauss? Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see too when these test results are done. Were they done after qualifying? Were they done after heat? Were they done after feature? Because they're more likely not softening tires. They make they make stuff to make your tires last longer. Um, like I said, you run in seventy five lap race. You need your tire to last as long as you possibly can. So whether you're altering a 20 or a 30 and you're making it last longer, um, that's, it'd be interesting to see, you know, it was it a softening, a softening material or was it something that was going to make the tire actually firmer, but I, and last longer and then fire more um, regularly. So, um, you know, was it those, those twenties are pretty soft. I don't think you need to worry about qualifying and getting a tire to fire. Maybe they're softening them. You know how qualifying is these days, Ryan. If you don't qualify up front, you're pretty much screwed. So maybe some of these places there are just softening stuff, and they're maybe they bust them after qualifying. I don't know, but um, obviously, you know, with the way the tracks are, you know, 60, 75 lap, or I would assume that they're strengthening their tire so they're making it last longer. Um, you know, and maybe say that some of these guys driving balls to the wall for 75 laps. Maybe some of the other drivers are going, that's impossible. My tires are burning off and yours are lasting. So that's what I'd be interested to see is what chemical are they using? Is it softening or are they trying to make it lengthen the tire out longer? Yeah, that that is a very interesting point. I mean, it would be very, I mean, I'm sure they've talked to the drivers. You know, it'd be kind of interesting to hear, um, was this after time trials? Was it after the heat? Was it after the feature? When, when did they take these samples? What part of the tire, right? Did they take the, take it from the center of the tire, the inside, the outside edge? Where did they get the sample from? There's a lot of variables. So a little transparency. I think uh, the drivers that, that are getting penalized, at least they, we, we're just the dumbasses talking about it, right? They don't owe us any of that info. But the drivers in question, they for sure should be given that info. What do you got there? I just got uh, Mr. Bobby Pierce just made a super long post on Facebook, so I'll read it here. Well, it I, I don't know. I, I'm, I went to Minnesota school, so it takes me a long time to read. Um, so uh, it's a long post, but I'll see if I can't get the gist of it and see what it says here. Okay, take, take a look at it. And uh, in, in the meantime here, I'll give a shout out to uh, one of our great sponsors, brand new sponsor here just a little while ago, good friend of mine. Hard Charger Performance Specialties out in Sydney, Montana. Nick Hoff, he's been building engines for over 20 years, right? Been in the racing industry literally pretty much his entire life. Um, lived in northern Minnesota for a while. Actually, he's built engines for me. Several people I know had a lot of success in our areas. But un understand, it's not just performance engines. It's performance specialties. He does a lot of other things. He'll do gears, lots of different stuff. Doesn't matter if it's a street stock, mod, late model, doesn't matter what the application is, he can build that engine. Does a great job. Also, if you're a Wasoda guy and you run crates, and let's say you injure your crate motor, you need some, you need it fixed. Well, you got to go to a certified builder. He is in the western part of Wasoda country, the the number one guy to go to to get your Wasoda crate engines repaired. Also, if you're in the Sydney, Montana area or 500 mile radius he's like pretty much the only dyno out there where you can schedule dyno time to actually try to better what you have going on so give him a call at 406-478-4437 that's hard charger performance specialties out in sydney montana so thanks nick for that so we talked about why not just let him do it coach Krause is kind of reading there so bert i'm gonna ask you this question 
we got this question from Brad, okay? Bobby Pierce, the reigning champ, right? Kind of committed himself to the world of outlaws. Will he <clears throat> run the rest of the world of outlaw tour? Will he run all the shows regardless of the fact? We know he can't win the championship. That's done, okay? He also can't win Lucas because he went to New Zealand. He didn't go to Speed Weeks, so he's out of that. Will he continue to run all the World of Outlaw shows after his suspension is levied just for sponsorship purposes and making money? Um, I will I will say he will not run every show. I mean, he's probably going to pick and choose, uh, you know, high paying events to go to. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go to some, Luke, you know, the high paying Lucas shows and. And that sort of thing, you know, if you can't win the championship, you might as well go for the money and to go for the money. You have to you can't race every world of outlaw race. And, you know, it is in, well, not interesting, but I mean, his suspension is going to keep him away from uh, the Illini 100 at Farmer City, you know, right in his own backyard. So, I mean, that that's uh, really got to, you know, it makes the sting even worse. <laughs> Yeah, that's unfortunate. And, you know, kind of one of the downfalls, Bert, to a series is there's a lot of good things. You follow a series, you get the provisionals, you get all that stuff. But let's face it, right? Every driver has tracks they love. And every driver has tracks they're like, oh, my gosh, that place sucks. Like, I, I don't want to go. But if you're following a series, you don't have a choice. You have to go. So I can see him, and I don't know what tracks he likes, what tracks he doesn't like. But I can definitely see him saying, you know what, I, I'm not really all that keen on maybe going to that area. So I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, he might skip a few of those. So, and there's a lot of stuff, right? You got the, you know, you got the hell tour and all that in the area. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of big money shows out there. So um, Coach Krauss is continuing to read. Any, anything you want to add there, <laughs> Coach Krauss, on that or? Um, kind of, what's your thoughts? Is he going to run every show or do you think he missed a couple? Well, he just stated right now it's up in the air with the world outlaws. So he's, he's going to sit back and decide what he wants to do. So with that being said, he, he made a post says he's 100% legal. They didn't do nothing to the tires. We didn't put anything in it. Um, he went on and stated that, um, he, how many tire samples he had done last year, Nothing came back, and he had a bunch done this year. Um, and it was it was a right rear, a thirty, a three from a right rear from Friday night. Um, Moran and Bronson's was from Tuesday, um, so that's why it was a that was a dirt car event. So, and then his was the on Friday night. So, I think the one he got second or third, he was running with Madden somebody. So, um, com completely denies it. Something's messed up. They had taken other samples from his tires that weekend, and they were all good. And this one right rear from from Friday night came back, not meeting the benchmark. And he, like I said, he says, as of right now, he's up in the air, what he's going to do with world outlaws. And that, that's the thing. I mean, whenever a driver gets nabbed for this, they always, you know, deny it to the fullest extent that they can. I mean, when, when Jason figure won the Illini 100, I don't know, what was that? Like eight, nine years ago already. Um, you know, he, he got, disqualified for altered tires and you know he denies it to this day that he didn't do anything um you know i referenced johnny whitman here in eastern wisconsin he you know denies it to this day you know i interviewed him and he denies it that he did it then the drivers always deny it and that's why i wish the the series would just be transparent and let it you know you know, let us know because you have the driver saying one thing, you have the series saying another thing, and you don't know what to believe. 100%. Uh, so the next one here is speaking of following the tours, right? So Jeff asks, will Kyle Bronson switch to Lucas? Now, I'm not 100% sure that he's even getting suspended from the world of outlaws. According to, according to what I read, it didn't say anything about him being suspended from the world of outlaws. It just said dirt car. Same thing with Moran. Now Moran, of course, he's a Lucas car anyway, right? So it doesn't matter, you know, the next, now he might've gone to, maybe he would have went to the Illini. I don't know if there's a Lucas race that weekend or not, but I think Bronson's up in the air. So if Bronson um, is, 
kicked out of Woo for the same deal, which I don't think he is. Can you see him? He's 13th in points in Lucas. Can you see him jumping ship and running Lucas? Or do you think he's just going to continue to stay on with the world of outlaws because he's, I don't think he's getting suspended. Uh, if he gets suspended, I would say he goes <laughs> to Lucas, uh, at least in the short term. Um, just because, you know, at least you, and especially in Lucas, you only have to be in the top four, you know, to, to advance on for the chance for win to win the championship. Where with the world of outlaws, you know, it's, you know, champion or nothing. Right. Krauss, anything, uh, anything else in that, that you read there? Anything yeah. He, uh, while we talked about transparency and, um, he has no idea what the chemical was. They didn't tell him, they didn't send him uh-huh. lab results. He wants to know. Um, so as of right now, he's got no idea. He's been, hasn't heard back from world racing group. He's been calling them. Hasn't got a phone call. Obviously it's a little bit later at night. So he's gonna have to wait till tomorrow, but he just wants to know which we, he should have the right. He should see the test. He should see the chemicals. They should be able to narrow it down on what they put into it or what they did. Um, just for everybody's sake. Cause like right. I said, he's, he said, I've had lots of drivers reaching out to me wondering oh, what was it? And he can't tell them, you know what I mean? So that that's where this transparency, like I said, you don't, you don't tell this driver what's going on and everything being transparent with them. I mean, you're going to make a lot of people mad. So uh, I would, I would assume Bronson's just going to go to Lucas makes sense. I mean, you're sitting 13th, you might as well run it. You got no shot of getting in probably in the top 10 of world or, uh, and even if he loses points, so it doesn't sound like he's going to, he's still going to be mad at them. You know what I mean? He's not going to sit there and it's Bronson. He's not going to do that. Just go run Lucas and then you can forget about it. You know what I mean? You don't have to run into any hassle. So just go run Lucas. That's probably what he's going to do. Right now. Think about this, right? We've all seen people get disqualified for various different things. Engines, right? If it's, if it's a group rule deal, they're transparent. You were this much too high, Right. If you get caught in, say, with soda racing or because World of Old, I don't know their engine rules, if they even have any, but in, let's say, with soda, right? If you get caught in with soda, like in a super stock with, I don't know, illegal rods, illegal crank, illegal heads, the tech guy, right? Bill Engelstad, the tech guy, whoever that may, is going to be, is going to be like, here's the parts. This is what's illegal, right? This right here, this is illegal. Full transparency. Here it is, right? You want to have your engine builder look at it. This is why we're calling it illegal. You may agree, disagree. There's, you know, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. But if it's an engine, they're going to flat out show you why you, they feel you're illegal. Okay, that's transparency. Why not with tires, right? That that is the million dollar question because it's not just them, right? Obviously, it was IMCA with Whitman. It was with Soda with Jaden Christ. This is just a common theme. It's not just World Racing Group. They all kind of do the same thing. Um, why not be transparent and, and just simply explain what the deal is? And I think that's really what people are asking for. So back to this one here. And this is a question we got from Joe, and you touched on this a little bit already. So <clears throat> some of the drivers I talked to that kind of feel like they need to drop the hammer, the suspend, you know, maybe the penalties need to be harsh enough so people quit doing it if they're in fact cheating but joe's question was a little different he goes the other way he's like as a fan right exactly what coach was saying i'm the one getting penalized here if i'm a world of outlaw fan i want to watch bobby pierce at the illini if i want to watch bobby pierce you know at uh whatever thunder hill this next event and now i don't get to right because you're suspending them what's an alternative is this too harsh you know what's an alternative that they could do if in fact it's it's proven that hey it was flat out illegal here's why it is what it is what should the penalty be well i mean i want to expand on something you just said i mean if it's a definite 100 percent rule that you know if if your engine is too big you know, you can show that it's too big. You know, there's a penalty. My problem with dropping the hammer with with these tire things is because you don't know if they're if the test if you know you've heard all these different stories about that lab is not very accurate and that sort of thing. So you have this, you know, 
cloud of inaccuracy hanging over it. And if you're going to drop the hammer on something that might be inaccurate, that's where, you know, I have a little bit of a problem. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not against dropping the hammer. If you can prove 100% without a doubt that they're cheating. Yeah. You, you know, you can drop the hammer if you want, you know, because that'll get rid of it. But it just seems like with these tire tests that there's just this uncertainty of whether the tests are accurate or not. So let's compare this to pro sports, right? Because essentially this is pro sport, right? World of all late models. Yeah. That's their livelihood. They got paid crew. They're paid drivers. They they make some of these drivers make real money compared to me working here driving at Halverlines. They make a lot of money compared to what I make working an everyday job. Okay, now transparency is absolutely needed. Imagine in the NHL, Krause, right? Um, Kirill Kaprizov gets caught for the Minnesota Wild with PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, right? And they say, no, no, you failed the test. You're out. You're suspended. You're out. What was it? Not telling you. Not telling you. How would that go over? It went over real well, and they don't do that in sports. They flat out and come out right out and tell you. Um, NFL guys, the baseball guys, what steroid you use? Was it an HGH? Was it a steroid? There's so much stuff out there that you can put in your body, but they flat out tell you. Um, Sudafed pops. The you know, you, You're not supposed to take any of that stuff. That's banned. Uh, from the deal, and I see USA Hockey has um, substances they send out every year um, that um, you can test for or look for, and you're not you're not supposed to be taking them. But you, like I said, you got to need to tra- be transparent. Tell them, um, and you know it's baseball. There's 182 games, um, and they you know they have a 20, 40, 60, 80, half a year, year put you on probation. A little bit different deal at the at the racing deal, but you have to be transparent. And tell them exactly what they're doing, because, um, like I said, there's a lot of baseball players. Yeah, we know they took steroids, um, but there's a lot of baseball players that take other stuff that don't know that they're banned, um, and they need to know. Hey, this is what you're taking. You can't take that, so you can fix it. So, any closing thoughts on this topic? Because this is the hot one. This is the big topic. I mean, Bobby Pierce is the show. I mean, he's arguably the number one, if not number one, in people's opinion, the top three. Uh, dirt late model drivers in america i mean uh changa actually put in a text feed like he's one of the few drivers where i would pay a, for a ticket just to watch him it's a big deal it's a big deal when when they're kicked out for a while i mean this is big news um any closing thoughts on this uh um before we move on well just that you know i agree you know the fans get hurt in this situation i mean i remember when bloomquist uh I got suspended for uh, altering tires and, you know, he had his 30 day suspension and this was like in July. And so I I was looking at the calendar. When's the USA nationals? Is he going to be at the USA nationals? You know, because I go there every year and you, you know, whether you like Bloomquist or not, you, you know, he puts on a good show and you want to see him race. So, you know, ultimately the fans get hurt in this deal and, um, you know, without Bobby Pierce, the outlaws just don't have a lot of star power. They uh, 100% agree. Nothing against Sheppy and Adam, right. and him, but yeah, you're spot on. Um, so what do you what do you think? Move on to the. We got one more fan question here, unrelated to this. We had a whole list. So, sorry, there's a few fans that sent in some stuff. We'll hit you up next week, right? But this was the topic, right? So, but we'll we'll get one additional one in here. Um, speaking of Speaking of fan questions, so Don, he sent me this one multiple times now, so I'm like, ah, I better get on it here. So, Don, here, this one's for you, buddy. <clears throat> so, with the internet right now, right, it's that time of year. With Soda Country, right, eastern Wisconsin, racing right around the corner. People's getting their, people are getting their cars done a little earlier because the weather's nice, right, except for Kraus. You know, we'll get to his later, right, but most people's cars are getting a little closer but we see pictures dropping all over the internet. Hey, look at the new body. Look at the new body. I mean, Dave Flynn's car, badass looking, you know, it's sweet, you know, new Longhorn. And we see all this. He's like, I, I, I hate it. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I like seeing the new cars. He goes, I do too, but I, I hate it. He goes, I used to love two things this time of year, two things. One mall car shows. You go to the mall car show, Bam, they'd unveil the new cars. You'd be excited to see the new paint schemes. I mean, it was great. And then showing up 
to your local track, right? At the beginning of the year going, man, what, what does Krause's car look like this year? What's, what's Tannis's car look like this year? You know, what do these cars look like? And you'd be just sitting there kind of giddy in the stands going, oh man, that, holy crap, that thing's sweet. That's way different than last year. And it kind of, he's like, seeing it on the internet's kind of killed that. Your guys' thoughts. No, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, that, that was, a, well, and still is one of my favorite things is seeing what the new cars look like. Um, when you're at the racetrack, um, just, you know, just a, as an example of how exciting, surprising it can be. Um, w- the first year that, uh, MJ didn't have a Miller beer on the side of his car because he had Miller, a Miller beer product on the side of his car for 20, 25 years. And the first year that he didn't have that on the car, when he unloaded the car, there's people just, there's no Miller product on it. You know, they're just all, all, you know, shocked. So, you know, I do miss that um, from the first week of the season or, or the practice, you know, seeing the cars for the first time, because now, you see the pictures on the internet and which, you know, in the dead of winter or early spring, it's nice to see the pictures on the internet. But if I had a choice, I, I, I'd, I'd wait till uh, the first week of the season. Coach. Yeah. I mean, does it, does it, does it take the site excitement away? You know what I mean? Is it, um, ah, I don't like his car or it does it say, Hey, I want to go see that at the track. Let's go run out to the track and see that. You know what I mean? That's, that's what you want to say is, is from a st- fan standpoint, because as a promoter, you want, you want the fans to come see the cars for the first time or a car show or wherever it may be. And now all of a sudden you just, you just pull up Facebook or pull whatever. Oh, there's that car. There's this car. There's this, there's that. Or, uh, you know, maybe driver, you know, a lot of drivers, a lot of um, like Shepard has a, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't unveil unveil his car until maybe a day or two before he's going to race it or, you know, kind of keep the excitement going, but does it have effect on fans? You know what I mean? Does it, is it take away the excitement? Does it take away the interest in, in coming out to the track? So it's an interesting thing, but no, like you said, he's 100% right. It used to be, uh, you know, back in the day showing up, going to the mall or um, we used to have a parade downtown Alexandria. We'd go from the mall You'd parade your cars right down downtown Alexandria. You'd drive. You'd have your hauler at the track, and you'd you'd go practice. That's what that was. That was kind of the annual deal. Um, so, and that that was kind of cool. So, yeah, I, I definitely think the internet, you know, takes away from the takes away from the excitement of seeing all these new cars. I had somebody say that opening night crowds traditionally in the past were a lot bigger simply because of the intrigue curiosity kills the cat right so a lot of people would be super curious they'd be coming with their cameras and all that to see the car when it was brand new that first night because they were curious that curiosity is gone so now it's just another race so thanks don for that glad we are able to hit that one there for you so not a lot of racing this weekend so not a top five moments, but we do have a few top moments of the week here brought to you by our friend Brad Parson. Brad Parson's Soil and Egg Solutions. So if you're in western Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, I tell you what, right? Planting season right around the corner. She's been she's been a dry winter, right? So hopefully you're going to get them crops in, have a good year. Well, how do you become more profitable? Better yields. How do you get better yields? Having the right chemicals. We talk about chemicals and tires. Obviously, World of Outlaws feels like chemicals in the tires that are not supposed to be there give you an advantage. Well, guess what? The right chemicals in your spray packages, they also give you an advantage. What do you want to learn about that? You want to learn how you can get your hands on them for 2024. Call Brad at 320-219-3542. Brad Parsons, Soil and Egg Solutions. So number three, guys. And I don't know the names because I I don't follow it, but a little thing going around Facebook here this past weekend. Did you guys see that incident on the, in the motocross race? Yes. Motocross in the top three. You didn't see, I didn't send that to you. Dude. It was, it was the big ones. What are the big ones? Two fifties is out there. I don't even, I don't even, I don't know. Whatever the bigger motors are, right? The, the bigger motors, because they were the faster ones. This girl, the one of the you know the card girls bird at the beginning that kind of that have the, all that, she literally didn't get off the track in time on the first lap and got smoked by a bike. 
Ow. <laughs> and and she the, the bike hit the sign. The sign hit her. She went flying. She didn't get hurt. No yellow, no red, no restart, no nothing. They just keep going. And and they're talking in the commentary. I watched a little video clip, and they're like, that may have cost that guy the race because he didn't have the whole shot. He kind of lost a bunch of ground. He's kind of you know one of the favorites to win. Coach Cross, what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I saw that. I was uh... – <laughs> Oh, that was crazy. And those races are crazy. I, I think they're even up to, I think they're up to four fifties now, Ryan. I think the two fifties, a smaller class now, I think they're running even something bigger now, but uh, okay. yeah, it's crazy. And um, that's a big deal. And, you know, as a, as a guy on the dirt bike, you're sitting here, well, hold on here a sec. I just ran into a monster energy, any energy girl. Do I need to stop, go back to see if she's okay? <laughs> <laughs> or are I, I think he just, he just kept on wheeling and kept on going and, you know, I don't, I think he kind of glimpsed back. He kind of looked, it was like, what was going on here just to make sure, but she kind of ended up getting out of the way, but crazy stuff, crazy stuff. They're like sprint car drivers. You just smack them in the head with a hammer and tell them to hit the gas and they just go. They don't really think anyway. So number two, I want to give a shout out to my buddy from Deer Lodge, Montana. Bo Brown was sold a super stock driver getting an early win on the season. <clears throat> he went down to the Mojave Speedway, Bullhead City, Arizona, Guys, they have super stocks, not with soda super stocks. He led all 20 laps down there. Um, Krause, they have the same motor that you run in their uh, aluminum 421s. That's kind of what you, same thing, same motor. You not, I should have went down there. I would have fit right in. <laughs> He's like, man, uh, he goes, I'm glad it dried out. He goes, the track needed to dry out to keep up with them, but. Congratulations, Bo Brown, representing Wasota Country well, representing Montana down there with a big win in Arizona. Tip of the cap to you. Um, hopefully you have a good season. In our top moment of the week, brought to you by our friends at Fastlane Motorsports and Powder Coating in Ashland, Wisconsin, home of the Galloper Chassis. Um, they are also the proud sponsor of the number one series in all Wasota racing, the Northland Superstock Series. Whether you need parts, safety equipment, fabricating done, sandblasting, powder coating, give them guys a call. Fast Lane Motorsports and Powder Coating, Ashland, Wisconsin. Guys, there was a little racing this weekend. Did you guys did you guys happen to see at least the highlights from the ComCam late models at uh Boot Hill in Louisiana? Bert, what happened there? I, I'm gonna let Krause touch on this, but I, it's a head scratcher. What what's well, your take? Was- what happened? It was actually a really good race. I mean, uh, Bobby Bobby Pierce and uh, Kay Dillard were battling back and forth, and it was uh, it was really exciting to watch when they were racing through traffic. Uh, in fact, uh, a lapper uh, got turned by Pierce. Well, there was contact made, and and the lap car got turned, and Pierce kept going. Uh, whether the lap car came up onto Pierce or Pierce turned him, whatever. But uh, it was on the it was. Two laps to, or no, how many? Five it was under five, under five laps to go. And uh, you know, normally Pierce is on the high side, but Dillard was running the high side and he drove in way too hard in turn <laughs> one, hit the wall, and well, unfortunately, the camera didn't catch all of it, but uh I didn't know that he rolled he rolled the car, but uh yeah, he rolled the car and Pierce went on the win and <laughs> It was it was crazy, and he messed up uh, the corner before that. He pushed bad in three and four, <clears throat> and then and then Pierce got inside of him, and he just yard sailed the fence, getting into one. Kraus, what happened there? It was the uh, Bobby Pierce factor is what happened there. Um, spotters, scoreboards, like I said, spotters can be a good thing, um, and scoreboards can be a good thing, but they can also be a bad thing. Um, I'm pretty sure Dillard. I uh, was running the high side. Um, it was dominant. It was a cushion. There's a wall. Um, and I'm sure his spotter was getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And I'm sure he knew who was behind him. And um, you, you have to, when the, when the cushion and stuff's like that, you have to think opposite. You actually have to slow down. Um, slow your entry down, get to the middle of the corner, and then gas out. Um, I learned that. I learned that a few years ago at I-94 Speedway is the way to get around the high side up at I-94 kind of slow it in there and then gas your way out, make that straightaway a little bit longer, especially it can get a little bit rough. That cushion can. Um, so he was just bonsai in there. And, he, and, and like you said, he was tight. So what do you usually do when you're tight getting in? 
you're going to drive it harder. Well, uh, that didn't work. So he, he, he bumped it over and one in, in three and four. And then he went into one and it, you couldn't even see him on the TV screen. He was so high. Right. And it was right. like, where are you going, buddy? Um, so it's, but it was the Bobby Pierce factors, 100% the Bobby Pierce factor. He's in second place and he put the pressure on Dillard and, and Dillard, um, they, he choked. Let's just say, let's say what it is. He, he choked and screwed up and Bobby got the win. Have you ever done that or had that done? Have you ever had that happen to you or someone else because of you? Yeah, I, I was, it's gone both ways. Um, you know, you're younger in my career. I know I, Moss did it to me a couple of times. I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. Um, Timmy Johnson has done it. Um, I, there's a there's a clip on, uh, this wasn't so much, but there was a clip on um, Dirt Race Central. I don't know if you watched that, that race between me and Johnson and Burdick at KRA. Um, I was leading it and I jumped the cushion over in three and four a little bit. And Timmy kept diving underneath me in one and two, but I had the momentum and all of a sudden I went in a little harder in three and four and got a little tight and he got me. So, and it, it happens the both way, especially with you see scoreboards, you know, when you're running and you see the scoreboard and, you know, back in the day, I'd see the 66 X or whatever it is, or Dan Zizens come pulling up on you and it can work the worth work the both ways too. All of a sudden you see the 71 or the 29 sneaking up on you you start driving a little bit different. And, and uh, it, I tell you what, it's, it's um, like I said, spotters can be good and scoreboards can be good, but they can also, they can also hurt you too. For sure. So let's jump into our next se- segment here. The 2024 Pickums segment brought to you by our sponsor, Otros. Flat out performance and turbine chassis, of Hancock, Minnesota. Um, Jeff Flatten now owns a uh, turbine chassis and flat out performance over there. Uh, great guys. Uh, Ryan Flatten runs the uh, the turbine house car over there. Um, so make sure you, you can hop on Facebook, um, get a hold of flat out performance. Um, I got a turbine sitting in one of my in my garage. I've won championships, won a lot of races in a turbine super stock. So I'm um, now he's getting into building mods too. So make sure you get a hold of Jeff Flatten at uh, flat out performance and uh, he'll get you hooked up. There you go. Thanks a lot to those guys. And, Kind of a goose egg this weekend. All the races that we were going to do picks in did not count, but we do have some drama. So we'll touch on that. So looking back, right, we did pick all the late model races from Volusia. Okay. Now, Moran, both of the nights in question where there was drivers disqualified, right, Moran won both nights. And the Friday night race it didn't matter. He wasn't as qualified on Friday. So that wouldn't affect our points at all. Right. But Moran won on Tuesday night. And if he got DQ'd, what do we do on the points there? Right. Do we, do we, do we adjust the points to where if you had Moran that night, going to just take two points away from you and then move everybody up? What do you think? Maybe punch the buttons. What do the fans think? Do we, do we adjust the points here? Do we just leave it? Call it as it is. What do you guys think? Uh, well, in my opinion, I mean, if they were disqualified, uh, that I, I don't think you should get the point. But uh, that that leads me to another point that I didn't bring up previously. You know, in, in none of the press release, I mean, it said they were disqualified, but it didn't say, you know, you know, so then then the victory went to so and so, you know. Are they moving everybody up? Are they keeping that prize money um, for, you know, for those three drivers for whatever position they finished in? Um, you know, what what's going on with that? I mean, when Johnny Whitman was was uh, disqualified here in eastern Wisconsin, um, you know, the second place car uh, was ruled the winner of the race. And that was that was stated right in the press release. Um, so it. You know, I, I'm not exactly sure what we're what they're doing with those with that prize money and if everybody moved up in the running order. That's an interesting the prize money is interesting too because they're getting fined that like in a typical with soda race, right? Huh. And I can't speak to all the other sanctions, but in with soda, if somebody's disqualified for whatever reason, let's say that they win, everybody moves up and their pay is compensated accordingly so if you got second you're now going to get winner's pay so when they find these drivers is world racing group just going to take that money and put it in their pocket and be like that's ours now or are they going to be like 
everybody moved up a spot here, right? So now we got to pay everybody a little bit more and compensate them accordingly. That's a good question, Bert. Also, um, Jeff actually asked, he goes, how about the Gator points? Pierce won the Gator championship down there, right? That was a little extra. I think there was a bonus on top of that, too. There was some prize money there and a big Gator. Does he give that money back? Does that money go to somebody else? Does somebody else get that big Gator? What happens here? There should be a press release on this. I would really hate to see World Racing Group just stick that money in their pocket. Krause? Well, first off, Bert, it's not about the money. It's about the trophy. Do you have to give the trophy back, Bert? That's the big question. <laughs> that's what it's all about. It's all about the trophy. I got trophy sitting right down here. Um, that's what it's all about. If you got to give the trophy back, then, then hey, then now you're disqualified. You're done. You don't get first place. Like you said, Ryan, I have no idea if they – it doesn't say he forfeited his win. I didn't see anything like that, so we can't change our points based on that. Now, if they take his win away and he's last and they bump everybody up, yeah, we have. then we had to do something about with our points. But, hey, it, Bert, it's about the trophy. That That's what we, us drivers want. We want the trophy, you know, and the sticker so you can put it on your car so you look all cool so you can tell all your buddies when they come down, look at there, I want a feature. So that's what it's all about. The money's you just blow the money anyway. That's all we're doing as racers is just blowing the money on stuff. So we want the trophies, Bert. Okay. That's a good point. I'm going to go with that right there. If if there's a press release that they're awarding the win to somebody else and everybody else is getting compensated, we'll adjust the points. Because there's only one person, I believe, that's actually going to lose points on this deal. Do you know who that is? Mr. 71A. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> I'm the only one that's going to freaking lose on this deal. So Jeff over there, good Jeff is like, heck yeah, we got to change this. But I think you got a good point. If they, if they actually strip them of the win, give the win to somebody else, compensate the pay. I, I would say that that would be a, a good way to judge it. So a look ahead to this week's events brought to you by our friends at Daytona one performance lubricants. No, they don't just have tire treatment. They do have tire treatment, right? They do. There's is a little different, not softener. It's treatment helps you run your tires longer. Is it legal? Well, some people don't give a shit because they're not going to pay $200 for a freaking tire next year. Ain't going to happen, right? So the fact is they have a lot more than that. One of the great products they have, I got educated a little bit onto that this week, is uh, their 3060 and 7590 gear oil. So they call it the fastest gear oil in the world. Um, reduces heat and friction. Um, on a dyno, on a chassis dyno, increase horsepower at the rear wheels as much as 8%. So you're looking for less drag, less friction. You know, that's, that's something to take a look at, right? That's not something in your motor. That's in your gears. And we know that gear oil gets pretty heavy. Less drag, less heat less wear and tear, check that out. Check them out, Daytona One Performance Lubricants. Check them out online. Check them out on Facebook. So, a couple of three events that we're going to do picks at this weekend. World of Outlaw Sprint Car Action, the Texas Two-Step at the Cotton Bowl Speedway in Page, Texas, Friday and Saturday. The Hunt the Front Late Model Series, the Bama Bash, Talladega Short Track, Friday and Saturday as well. And then the Northern re renovated. This series went away for a while, but it's back. The Northern All-Stars Late Model Series, 48th Annual Spring 50 at Florence Speedway in Walton, Kentucky. That that track, I've been to that track. I went down to the North-South 100, and they throw haymaker sliders at that one. That, that'll be a fun one to watch. That is on Saturday. Um, out of those three races, the, those three events, guys, which are you guys looking forward to the most? Um, probably the hunt the front. Um, yeah, I'll go with the hunt the front. Coach, uh, the world all out sprint cars. Uh, I'm excited to see them guys. They always put on a good show. They'll be fun to watch. Uh, two shows in a row. Hopefully, um, hopefully, Donnie Shots can keep winning. I, we're all going to go three different because when there's a when there's a late model race at Florence, I'm jacked. And uh, Josh Rice, the Josh Rice factor, he is incredible at that place. I know I don't know who's all going to be there. I know that him and RTJ are going to be there. Those two head to head is worth the price of admission all by itself. So let's get to our last segment here. 
three bold predictions. And this accountability session, we'll start with that, is going to be brought to you by our editor. Who's our editor of the show? Our editor is elevate-visual.com. Um, Brandon, uh, video production. So if you need any video production work done, drone work done, um, he does great flyovers of real estate. So if you're a real estate agent out there, pretty much anywhere um, central Minnesota, he's not afraid to go anywhere. Um, so in northern Minnesota, if you're anywhere in the region there, make sure you get a hold of elevate-visual.com video production. Get a hold of Brandon and he will take care of you. Thanks a lot, Brandon. So nothing off the board for pretty much all of us this weekend except for good Jeff. Okay. He said that Bobby Pierce was going to go cherry picking down in Louisiana, but he wasn't going to leave with a win. He was wrong. That, that, that was not the case. And uh, he also had one that were, this one can't come off the board yet. It's pending appeal. He said last week that Bobby Pierce was not going to repeat as World of Outlaw late model champion. Well, that, uh, I'm here to tell you, that might be correct. And I, uh, I don't know. I, I'm a little skeptical there. I feel like he may have had something to do with that. I can't prove it. But I'm going to maybe have to get a hold of Bobby Pierce and have him look into it. Our standings here, um, right now, Bert, you're still leading the way at seven because the only one that had one on the board was Jeff. No, he's going to be at six. He's going to get one more point. So it's going to be a tie between me and good Jeff at six. In the completion percentage, the peanut gallery leading the way at 37.5. Now, let's get into our last part of this here, this week's predictions. And uh, I want to thank our sponsors over in Watertown, South Dakota, Dirt Track Supply, Ron and Trevor Anderson, great ambassadors to the sport, great success on and off the racetrack. They build the aero chassis and they sell any part that you need racing related, safety equipment, tires, parts. They do fabricating. They do a great job. They do some really nice work out there. They service a lot of racetracks. So get a hold of them guys in Watertown. That's Dirt Track Supply. So. We're going to make three laps around the track, and we got to pick typically racing-related, and it's got to be something that either did or did not happen, not typically uh, opinion-based. We're going to start with good – we'll start with Bert. We'll go to Coach Kraus, and then we got good Jeff. We got Kenny from the Phoenix Gallery, and then I have three picks as well. So, Bert, your first pick, your first prediction. All right, I'm going to go with the uh, Northern All-Star Late Model Series and say uh, Josh Rice will defend his home turf and pick up the victory there. All right, Rice, Rice, baby. <laughs> All right, Coach Krause. Unmute yourself there, Judd. We'll stay down there, uh, Bert, down at, uh, at Florence, um, except for you're going to be wrong. I'm going RTJ is going to sweep everything. He's winning um, He's winning qualifying, he's winning the heat, and he's winning the feature. So it's got to be an all-three deal. you got to sweep everything, Mr. RTJ. So uh, don't fail me. You're going to take home. He's taking home everything. All right. We got good Jeff here. And uh, we're going to go World of Outlaw Sprint Car Action at Cotton Bowl. World of Outlaw Sprint Car Drivers will sweep the podium both nights. So World of Outlaw Regulars will sweep the podium both nights down in Texas. So we got Kenny here. Kenny back in action uh, for the Peanut Gallery. With Soda National Champions, there will be at least two new national champions in 2024 for Wissota Dirt Track Racing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go World of Outlaw Late Models here, guys. I'm gonna go with the smooth operator Bobby Pierce. Regardless of the fact that he's clearly not gonna defend his championship, right? He will end 2024 with the most World of Outlaw wins in the 2024 season. So he will come back, he'll be pissed off, and he's gonna take their money. Bobby Pierce will have the most woo wins in 24. All right, Bert. 
White flag, All right. two low, or I'm double, going, uh, double hockey sticks. Talladega short track, hunt the front. Um, Tanner English turns a season around and gets at least one feature victory um, at Talladega short track. Okay. At least one win for Tanner English. What do they call him? The blue bluegrass rattler? Is that what they call him? I don't know. <laughs> I think they call him that. Yeah, he's a he's a Kentucky boy. So, all right, Coach Kraus. We're st- we're uh, we're gonna stay down to hunt the front. We're gonna go. Uh, Mister Joseph Joiner is gonna be on the podium both nights. Um, so Friday and Saturday in the ten car, the hunt the front, uh, hunt the front TV, the whole nine yards, the uh, YouTube channel. He's got everything over there. He's getting uh, podiums both nights. Sounds good. We're going to go to Good Jeff. We'll go to the Hunt the Front race, the Bama Bash in Talladega. Tanner English will leave with the Hunt the Front Series point lead after this weekend. So Kenny has one. He's going to go. He said, this one's for Brad, he said. This one's for Brad. Everybody likes Brad. He said, this one's for Brad. He goes, there's going to be six different NASCAR winners in the next 12 NASCAR Cup races. Six different winners in the next 12 cup races. All right. My second one, we're gonna go, we're gonna go World of Outlaw champion is gonna be Brandon Shepard. Brandon Shepard is gonna be the champion, and I'm gonna parlay that. Madden is gonna get second. So Shepard Madden won two in World of Outlaw late model points in 2024. All right, Bert, white flag. Now it's the final lap. What do you got? Uh, well, first, uh, speaking of NASCAR, did you see another dirt tracker won uh, this last weekend? <laughs> I did see Bell 5.5 <laughs> uh, sec. Boring race. It was awful. Yeah. I mean, it was uneventful, but five and a half second lead. He was 20th, though, with only a handful of laps to go. He kind of charged uh, i don't know how many laps were left when he's 20th he stormed up there but yeah he's pretty dominant all right uh my final one um i picked this one last week but they didn't race um i will say carson macedo turns his season around and gets at least one victory down at cotton bowl speedway okay okay carson macedo gonna win at least one coach kraus your third and final lap on the track yeah, we're going uh, World of Outlaws again, and um, we're going uh, Donnie Schatz uh, is getting a win and a podium this weekend. So I, I I go a little bolder than what Bert does. <laughs> he just a uh, he just does this one thing deal. Um, I you know I make it a little bit tougher on myself, so I'm going to go Shots with a win and a podium. Um, so he's got to be in the top. He's got to get a win and be in the top three. So a little bit tougher than uh, Bert over there sandbagging. All right, Donnie Shots. There you go. So we got one here. This one also for Brad from Good Jeff. The show Kyle Bush is going to win the cup race at Bristol. Kyle Bush at Bristol. All right, Kenny's Kenny's third and final one here is a parlay. The World of Ola Texas two step down at the Cotton Bowl Speedway. Friday night is going to be his birthday brother. Apparently, he shares a birthday with uh, the old. Former Minot Missile, right? Donnie Schatz. Um, Donnie Schatz going to win Friday. And the 1S Express, Logan Schuhart, is going to win on Saturday. So Kenny predicting both winners and the respective nights. Schatz night one, Schuhart night two. All right. My third and final one is going to be a parlay as well. I'm going to kind of take one out of Krause's book here. I'm going to go the Reaper. Ryan Gustin is going to win at least one at Talladega. And the other race will also be on the podium. RTJ is going to win at Florence. And Carson Macedo will have the best average finish of the all the drivers in the two nights at Cotton Bowl. So we're going to go with a big parlay there. So take one out of Coach Krause's book there to see if, uh, <laughs> so that way I don't get any grief from, from him here this week. So, so I tell you what, guys, uh, 
big curveball. Kind of kind of thankful for them guys getting in trouble because kind of pretty light week on racing. It was something to talk <laughs> about here this week, nonetheless. But as a racer on both sides of the on both sides of the coin, man, it it sucks, right? I mean, these guys these guys work their asses off to put themselves in position to succeed out there racing, and Pierce has kind of turned himself into the, one of the best drivers out there and I, I hard to say. I have no idea exactly what happened. You know, I, I, I wasn't there. I don't prep their tires. I don't know what they do, but uh, hopefully they get some transparency and get some clarity here. And on the flip side of things, if you're a driver, right? If you're a driver, say like Chris Madden, right? Or somebody like that, that kind of been a little bit on the outside looking in with Pier- with Pierce and RTJ and all that. Are, are you what's going through your mind right now, right? As as you're seeing this going, these fuckers have been stealing from me. Like, what's going through their mind? You, what what do you think? Well, I, I'm sure that crossed their mind. Like, you know, well, and fans' minds too. You know, well, that's why he's what. That's why he had such a dominant season. And th- that's the bad thing about this too. You know, like you said, we don't know. If he did it or if he didn't do it, um, if he didn't do it, you know, his reputation is, it, you know, where do you go to get your reputation back? But, you know, so it, it's a tough deal. Yeah, they're going to get Scott Bloomquist on one of the podcasts calling these guys cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kraus, uh, what do you think? What goes through a driver's mind when you hear something like this? Do you kind of tend to lean with, uh, eh, I don't know if they were necessarily doing that, or do you lean with, uh, maybe that's why they picked up some speed here. What, what, where do you go with that? Yeah, one hundred percent. Especially when you're when you're in the thick of it, you're going, yeah, those bunch of cheaters. And then the flip side of it, you're also going, all right, it's go time. We just got Bobby Pierce off it. There's going to be a new champion this year. Let's get to work. Um, hey, let's make sure all our ducks in a row. There's a lot of money on the line, the championship on the line. He's out of here. He's a non-factor right now. Uh, let's not worry about it. Let's put that behind us, and let's go win a championship. All right, fans, punch the buttons down there. Let us know, whether it's by message, comment, whatever you want to do. Let us know your thoughts on this whole debacle, on this whole uh, tire debacle with these guys. Let us know what you think. So, as always, I'm Ryan. That's Bert. That's Coach Krause. Thanks for tuning in to the One to Go Show.